Yeah. Trusting God's promise of new life, let us confess our sins. For Christ came in humility to share our lives. Forgive our pride. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ came with good news for all people. Forgive our silence. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ came in love to a world of suffering. Forgive our self-centeredness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Dear beloved God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. May Almighty God strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. O God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast in your house. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson this morning is from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. The baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the book of 1 John, chapter 4, 15 to 21. <clears throat> God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God and hate a brother or sister are liars. For those do, who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen, cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
This is the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he's brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger, but they'll run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy, but I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. One of the things that made the teachings of Jesus so captivating to his first disciples was that he used images, metaphors, and stories that were common in first century Palestine. So mustard seeds, nets full of fish, and of course, shepherds. When Jesus says the kingdom of God is like this, everybody knew what he was talking about. One of the things that makes the teachings of Jesus frustrating for us is that he uses images, metaphors, and stories common to first century Palestine. So when Jesus starts saying the kingdom of God is like this, we start Googling mustard seed size or first century shepherd Middle East, what like? But there is at least one image in today's gospel reading that we all know well. And as it just so happens, it's an image we've heard throughout this Easter season which is the door or the gate. When the risen Jesus appears to his disciples in St. John's Gospel, he finds them huddled together in a room. And because the disciples are afraid, they've locked all of the doors. That's John's image of communities, of systems, relationships, deprived of life and headed toward death. Not a stack of bones, not a rubble, a pile of rubble, but a people who have pulled themselves together and locked all the doors. Nothing of value can get out, nothing new can get in. It isn't difficult to think of examples of this from our own context, of times when we've literally or metaphorically locked all the doors. Sometimes the results can be sort of funny. The bishop occasionally tells a story about a congregation that met with her and proudly told her that they no longer invited people to become involved in their congregation's mission. Isn't that great? And when the bishop asked, why would you stop doing that? They replied, well, we already have all the people we need. Jesus wept. But sometimes the results can be depressing and tragic. Think of stories in the news this month about people killed or injured for doing benign things like ringing a doorbell, joining a carpool, or just making a wrong turn. It isn't threatening or menacing behavior that we're afraid of, but just the mere presence of someone new or something unknown can set us on edge. So you can see why John used this image of the locked door to symbolize a community headed toward death. Because when we turn in on ourselves that far, everything becomes a threat. Even good things like new relationships, new experiences, new neighbors, come to be seen as something to be kept out. And systems like that, whether they're families or congregations or towns, may be able to exist, but they'll never experience what John calls abundant life. Because abundant life is not something we can conjure up from our own resources or expertise or talents. It's something that always comes from outside of us. And it's difficult to receive that gift if we keep on locking the doors. And this is why Jesus makes a point in today's gospel reading, not just to call himself the shepherd, but also the door. Jesus the shepherd protects us from other people, other forces, other systems that would harm us.
But Jesus, the door, saves us from getting trapped in the narrowness of our stories and projections and fantasies about the world around us. In his resurrection, Jesus opens up a way for us to connect with God and our neighbors. When the risen Jesus first appeared to his disciples that first time, they surely asked, how did Jesus get in here if we locked all the doors? And the punchline, of course, is that Jesus is the door. And that in triumphing over death, Jesus not only leaves behind his tomb, but brings us out from our own locked rooms and gives us the confidence to boldly bring our praises and petitions before God. Now, we know this even if we don't explicitly talk about it a whole lot. Every time we begin worship, we begin with a prayer of the day, and that prayer always ends the same way. We ask this, and what's the next word? Through. When we pray, we don't just sort of toss our responses out to God and hope that God hears them. We enter a conversation through Jesus. We take on his words, his relationship, his posture. Jesus is the gate that lets us talk to God intimately. Because we pray through Jesus, even our imperfect, roundabout prayers always carry his inflection of desire for wholeness. And the same is true of our relationships with other people. Jesus opens us up to see one another freed from our own projections and stories that serve only our own interests. So often we go through our days thinking that we really know other people. When someone annoys us or angers us or frustrates us, it's because of who they are as a person. Why hasn't this person thanked me? Because they're a selfish person. Why does this person drunk text me at 3 a.m.? Because they're an inconsiderate person. These stories make us feel alive because they make us feel important and superior and most important, right? But they only lock us into resentment and cynicism and lead us toward death. Before anything has happened, I'm locked into my expectation about who you are. But something changes when we see each other through Jesus. And this is one reason why you shouldn't just receive communion regularly, but every once in a while you should serve communion. Because you see people, literally and metaphorically, through the body of Christ. And for many people, that's when we learn to see each other, to encounter each other the right way again. Christ the door opens up all those narratives we use to protect our egos and agendas and lets us see one another in the light of his resurrection. Unlike Jesus' first disciples, we probably don't know firsthand what a mustard plant looks like. It's probably big. Or what it's like to be a shepherd. It's probably hard. But we know all too well what it's like to build our own tombs by locking all of the doors. And whenever we do that, Christ comes to us again and again, giving us his new and abundant life. Christ the door opens our hardened hearts so that we may have his life and have it abundantly. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let's join together with the church around the world as we confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken it through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I invite the assembly to sit or kneel for the reading of today's prayers. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You are the shepherd who gathers us in your mighty and loving arms. Help your church to listen for your voice, especially when the voices of sin, idolatry, and oppression threaten to overpower us. Hear us, O God. Mercy is great. The green pastures, still waters, and dark valleys of this earth all belong to you, O Lord. Sustain your creation with a love that is both mighty <clears throat> and just. Where there is destruction, bring healing. Where there is desolation, bring abundance. Hear us, O God. Mercy is great. You proclaim shepherding love and protection for all people and all of creation. Direct leaders in our own time to learn from your example. Give them servant hearts that they generously seek the good of all. We pray, pray especially this week for the people of Af Afghanistan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Mongolia, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You journey with us wherever our paths may lead. We pray for those feeling overwhelmed by anxiety or depression or suffering in any way. At this time, if you have any petitions of your own you'd like to add. Hear us, O oh God, mercy is great. You are the sheep gate that gives safety to your beloved flocks. With thanksgiving, we remember those who have died. Keep us in communion with all the saints until we, at last, find our rest in you. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy is great. We offer these prayers in the name of the one who sets a table before us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you.
Generous God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be he with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O God, creator of heaven and earth. You rescued your covenant people, led them throughout their journeys, and taught them through the prophets. You so loved this world that you gave your only Son that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Celebrating our Lord's victory over death, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit in this meal and unite us in this community of faith and with your people throughout this world. For all glory and praise belong to you, O God, the author of life, the word made flesh, the power of the Most High, now and forever. Amen. And gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And thought of Christ given for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. Living God, your Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of the bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in all his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns 
now and forever. Amen. Amen. Any um, announcements before you receive the blessing? I know we have refreshments. Yes, you're out on the west side over there. Um, confirmation, you're going to hang with me. It's my last confirmation class with this group. I'm crying, so I can't believe it. Uh, and then the newsletter went out last week, so please take a look at that. We have a bunch of stuff going on in May, so please take a look at that. Mark your calendars. And I invite you to receive the blessing. May Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, fill you with his life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace, feed God's sheep. Thanks be to God.